was it? My um. Um, song in the end? Was no, it no, no. Um, I put it in my sort of uh, What's the song? The P. Proposal? Pro pro is it proposal? And the proposal is like what your project is. Yeah, yeah, yeah proposal. Proposal. Okay. Uh, This is week whatever blog for my FMP. I've joined with Harvey Holt. And uh, yeah, so today we're going to be touching on the difference between diagenic and non diagenic sound and how I'm going to be incorporating that uh, in my proposal and in the final FMP. So, for a bit of background, on the last project I did the, uh, the short, my main role was uh, sound design and audio. So that was post-production, uh, post so on-set audio recording with the Tascam 60D, uh, the Rode mic and just general kind of sound management. And then obviously I did some uh, sound design for, you know, art filming as well. So I did some different sound effects, audio levels and that sort of thing. So while I was doing that and going into the FMP, I picked up on the type of sound method that I'm going to be hopefully employing when I make the uh, final product, which is diagenic and non-diagenic sound. It's like, Harvey, do you have any idea what those two mean? Uh, diagenic and non-diagenic. Is it diagenic and non-diagenic sound? I, 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 I don't know. Like, it, it's something to do with like whether it's made in the studio or it's the actual audio of the video yes. you're recording. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, actually, you know, I, I was amazed. I, I personally didn't think you'd grab that because it's a tough one. But oh, no, well, if it, like I do genuinely want to be in the industry when I'm old, like the film industry, and that's good. To so you got, you got, you got, you got to like you're gonna do your research from wherever you can to do yeah. whatever all you want to be if you want to progress. Yeah, and also to think back to words you can use when you write down stuff. So yeah. So basically, uh, diagenic sound, which is the first one, is audio and sound you would hear in the, the world, right? So in the story world that you're filming. So for example, if we had a set here, right, this was our story with the characters. If I was to go like that on the table, right, that's the sound which I've made in worlds, and it's the sound that we can both hear. That's diagenic sound, right? So that is sound which is coming from the world around us. Non-diagenic sound is stuff like music, and you know, like keys. sound effects. Yeah, things. sound effects. There's something you add in that wasn't actually yeah. sounded in the book, that wasn't actually a part of the original shot that you recorded. Yeah, so like sound stingers, all that sort of thing, especially in horror movies, um, uh, non diagenic sound is used quite a lot. Um, I plan on applying it in different ways, whether that's with soundtrack of music playing over a scene, or as, um, you know, just things like, uh, you know, just. Um, uh, environmental kind of tones which help kind of set the mood. That's a non-diagenic sound. I know in um uh what's it called? Dunkirk. Yeah they used throughout the whole film there wasn't actually any music. There was this long kind of drone, right? And that is non-diagenic sound because it sets the mood and the pacing, but the actors and the characters can't actually hear that, right? So, you know, it gets a bit muddy when you do things like um, sound effects that would be coming from the world. An example is in the first scene in the office where Harvey takes out a pack of smokes and he taps it on his hand. Well, that is a sound that we added in after filming. It's also a sound that he would hear. So while it was added after the scene, it's not actually non-diagenic. So we get those two. That sound and uh, two different things I'm going to try and research and then put into the uh, project for the final. And um, yeah, besides that, we kind of first scene is completely done. Uh, the office scene we had there, that's all edited and finished. Next thing we're going to do, I know you and me are going to go to the Flex nightclub. Yeah. Film a, a short kind of chase scene there. We're debating on whether we want to do it uh, day or night. Um, obviously night's a bit more complicated for, you know, logistics and getting everyone around and that sort of thing. Um, but if we really want to make it dark, we can always uh, do that in post. Obviously that's going to be a whole other kind of worms. I'm going to have to research and, uh, yeah, but research is research, right? So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Is there anything you wanted to have made in terms of what music we might be using? I know we talked about music quite a bit. Yeah, like you said, um, originally you wanted to, uh, like <coughs> the end of the film, you originally wanted to use uh, What I've Done by Linkin Park, but then, you, but then you recently got the idea that at the end there could be a big explosion and then uh, won't get pulled again by the Who plays in the background, you know, the bit close to the end of the song that goes, yeah, 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 like the scream bit. And um, when, you hit, when you hear that, you were, when the explosion goes off, you hear that scream. Mm. Yeah. And you don't want any lyrics in it? No, I think the, the thing with lyrics, right, sometimes they work with closing credits, but also it can kind of 
confuse people. Yeah. yeah. Of it, I think it would just be a good thing. We just got we just got to try and find somewhere where we can just get the sheet um, music. Yeah, yeah. And not the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, the, like we'll have to like combine both files of the original version and the sheet music. Which is if we if you want to keep the screen. Yeah. Then we're gonna to need to briefly yeah. use the original one. Then like and have the original cut to the sheet music. Yeah. Which is you know, pretty easy. I can do that in a premiere or um, audition. Yeah. Probably. Um, yeah, yeah. Besides that, you know, all the other music is pretty much stay the same. Um, I know we made notes and we talked about that in the last vlog. Nothing's really changed there. Everything else is kind of as it is. Um, and almost all the audio files that we use for this project will go into the audio directory, which is on the uh, the FMP uh, folder there. Um, besides that, uh, I was helping Will out with this project uh, last week. Um, this is just kind of you know extra work, just to communication, work and experience. And yeah, as well. Yeah. So me just communicating with other guys, um, sharing my knowledge and helping you know just do more in the area. Um, I was doing weapon familiarization for the guys who were using props on set. Obviously, I've had a bit of experience with that, so I was kind of Will's bucket and interpreter when it came to that sort of thing. And um, but yeah, so that's it really. You know, we're pretty much well underway. We're not really behind schedule too much. And um, yeah, the project should hopefully be done on time. I don't know if you want Plus, to we, we have got um, another couple of weeks to do it, as Ben said yeah. this morning. So if we ever did need the extra time, we've got it. So, yes. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it really. Yeah. So yeah. And see. Sorry, my phone did lose too much charge.